Welcome to lecture four, using arithmetic operators. So as we briefly said before, an operator is just a symbol that represents some kind of action. So we used the plus symbol or the plus operator for concatenation when we were combining strings together. So now when we're talking about arithmetic operators, we're going to be using the plus, minus, multiplication, division, and remainder operators to perform mathematical operations. So when we have two integers and we use the plus operator, we can combine and add the numbers together. Same thing with the other operators. So the, like I said, the basic operators that we're going to be using are plus for addition, minus for subtraction, multiplication, division, and the percent sign, the percent sign is the remainder oper operator. Also, it's called the modulus operator, and we'll look at what that actually does. So let's start off by just creating some variables using these basic operators and then printing out the values of the variables to the console. So let's simply start with the uh, plus operator. So let's say int um, my int equals 5 plus 5. So a little review this is creating a variable now the assignment operator basically says anything that's on the right hand side gets assigned to whatever is in the left hand side so whatever's on the right hand side of the operator which is this 5 plus 5 that will be dumped into my integer so it first adds 5 and 5 which is 10 and then my int will hold the value 10 so to show you how this works I'm just gonna go ahead and print the my int to the console by saying console dot right line my int and when I hit control F5 to run it you'll see that instead of printing 5 or something like that it prints the answer 10 so it adds 5 and 5 together and stores that into the variable called my int so subtraction works the same way if I have int my int 2 equals 5 minus 5 and then I go ahead and try to print my int 2 you'll see that now I get a zero so it simply subtracts the two numbers we also have multiplication so int my int 3 equals 5 times 5 and then console dot right line my int 3 we see 25 so these are just the basic mathematical operations that we can perform on our variables and, and how we can manipulate our data a little bit. So we get 10, 0, and 25 by adding, subtracting, and multiplying. <clears throat> now, division is a little bit tricky, and that's why I want to take a second to explain that, and, uh, and the modulus operator is a little tricky as well. So the tricky thing with the uh, division and dividing is that when we divide numbers that have decimals, everything works out fine. For example, let's go ahead and divide 45 divided by 2. So we'll just create a double and we'll say double my double equals 45 divided by 2. Now when I go ahead and print my double, notice what answer we get. We see a 22. Now you may be thinking, well that can't be right. There has to be a decimal. And the reason why we're getting a 22 is because the division is tricky. When I divide two integers, because 45 and 2 in this case are treated as integer, this is doing integer division. Even though I'm storing the answer into a double, I'm still getting integer division. So basically it cuts off the decimal place because it thinks that it's dividing two integers. Uh, so basically, I could change this to an integer, and I would still get the same exact answer. I could do 45 divided by 2, store it into the answer, and I'm still going to get that same 22 because it's a problem. It's doing integer division, even though that the variable is a double. So what we can do to fix this is that we need to tell the computer to, no, don't divide by an integer. Let's di uh, divide by a decimal. So if I say, okay, or do floating point division, if I say 45.0 now, I'm saying, okay, don't do integer division, do division by, uh, by decimals. So now when I run it now, we see that we have that 22.5. So now we're actually getting the, uh, the, the proper answer because I'm saying to do division using the correct method. If I try to store this into an integer now and say 45 divided by 0, it's going to get an error because an integer cannot hold a decimal number. 
So that's why we get that error there. But this is how we can tell to not do integer division. So that's just one thing you need to be looking out for. You can, by accident, do integer division if you don't tell it to do um, division otherwise. And then the last operator, which is the percent sign, that is the remainder operator, or, or it's called the modulus operator. And basically, all it does is returns the remainder of something. So if I say uh, double remain equals, and I say 5 mod 4, this is going to basically what happens is it says 5 divided by 4, and then get the remainder of that, whatever it is, so how many is left over. So how many times 5 can go into 4, and how much do you left over? If I go ahead and print the remain to the console, we see that there is one left over. So basically, it does the division and then gets the remainder, whatever is left over. So that's what the modulus does. Um, yeah, so these are the five basic arithmetic operators that you can use to manipulate your data and, and do some cool things. Now, because we have many operators and because we can write complex statements, there is operator precedence, meaning that some operators um, get executed first before other ones, so you have to know what order um, the operators are going to get executed in. And basically, the way to remember this is that multiplication, division, and the remainder operator get evaluated at the same precedence, and then they'll get evaluated left to right. And then after that comes addition and subtraction, and then that goes left to right again. So for example, if we go ahead and make a little complex statement here by saying, let's say, int result equals 2 plus 3 times 4. So basically, all we need to do here is we have to know what is going to happen first. So, like I said, multiplication is a higher precedence than addition. So, basically, 3 times 4 will get um, executed first. And the answer of that will be added to 2. And then that will be stored into result. So, if we go ahead and print and say console.writeLine, the result is, using placeholders and plug in result and run that, we see the answer is 14. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So we're getting that 14. Now, there are parentheses. We can basically force um, certain operators to execute first. So if I want it to add 2 plus 3 first, I can put parentheses around the 2 plus 3, and that will change and make it do 2 plus 3, which is 5, and then do 5 times 4 after that. So when I run that, now we can see that it says that the result is 20. Now, in all these examples, I've been just adding numbers together, but don't worry, like, I don't want you to get confused that we can also add variables together because these variables are of type integer and double. We can add those as if they were numbers as well. So let's say I wanted to create another integer, my int 4 down here, and I want to say that my int 4 is equal to my int 1, 2, and 3 added together. Well, I can do that. I can say my int plus my int 2 plus my int 3. So that's another way that we can add things together. We can use the variables. And then if I print out console.write line my int 4 down here, we'll see that my int 4, which is the last one, is 35, is them all added together. So you don't only have to add numbers together. We basically can add variables together. And that's what most likely is going to happen. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that at the end of the uh, section. So knowing that you can add in terms of variables, one question that I always ask beginner programmers is the question of how do you increase a variable's number by another number? For example, if I have my int, the variable, and I want to increase itself by one, how would you do that? And normally, this confuses many beginner programmers. For example, let's go ahead and create a new variable down here. Let's say int x equals 5. And I said, how do I increase x by 1? I've seen so many answers for this. I've seen people trying to just say, OK, let's just change the, the value of x to 6. Oh, that's increased by 1. But you can't do that. Um, I have people that normally go x equals plus 1. 
And basically what this is doing is just assigning the value of x to positive 1. Um, so that's not the answer either. And it really confuses people because they don't understand that a variable is an, a storage location. So I can use that. I can get whatever is in there to use it to change the value as well. So the correct answer for this is that I need to use myself because I'm saying, okay, I need to overwrite. When we use the assignment operator, this completely overwrites the value of whatever that variable is. If I say x equals 6, it's not adding 6 to the, the current 5. Rather, it's completely overwriting whatever is in there and storing the 6. So with that, I need to be able to use the current value and then add on top of it in order to get the, the value that I want. So the answer to how I add 1 to whatever x is currently is I say x equals itself. So that's how we get it back, whatever it currently has. So x equals itself plus 1. So this takes whatever is currently inside of x, adds 1 to it, and then reassigns it back to x. This is what gets whatever's in x, adds 1. So we have 6 right now. And now, now I'm saying x equals 6. So in this example, you don't need to know what is inside of x. You just need, you just take whatever it is and add 1 to it, and then you reassign it. So if I print out the value of x now and say console.writeLine, the value of x is, placeholder, plugging in x, and run that, we can see that it says the value of x is 6. So it took whatever is in it and increases it by 1. If I change this to 15, Notice how I don't have to change this line of code at all. It automatically just takes whatever it is and adds 1 to it. So you can see now it says the value of x is 16. So that is the proper way of doing it. So the only thing that I want to add to this is notice how in this example, I have to say x twice. I have to say x equals x plus 1. So it's a little duplication there. So because adding numbers to itself is such a common um a common um, operation to do, there are shorthand arithmetic operators that basically can take this and combine it into one operator and remove the duplication. So the first operator I want to show you is, in this example, is the add and assign operator. Basically, it's equivalent to this, but it just shortens it down a little bit. So I can say instead of x equals x plus 1, I can just say x plus equal 1. Notice what it does. It takes the plus and the equal from this example, combines them together, and then it removes the duplicated x. But it's doing the same exact thing. Here it's saying add and assign. That's what it's saying. It's saying add 1 to x and then reassign it so that it updates. So these two lines are equivalent. x equals x plus 1 and x plus equal 1 do the same exact thing. It's just a shorthand to remove the duplication of the x's and to make it a little bit easier to read. Um, now, these shorthand arithmetic operators are available in all the basic forms of uh, math operators. So we can do x times equal, you know, 5. So there's times equals, there's minus equal, and divide equal. All these operators you can use, and they do the same exact thing. They're just a shorthand for doing this add and assign kind of behavior. So the last thing that I want to talk about in this lecture is one more type of operator. And basically we see it here now um, that adding 1, specifically 1, to a variable is a very common task. And you'll see what, why it's common in the future uh, when we use arrays and loops and things like that. You'll see why adding 1 is really common. But because it is so common, there are uh, there is a specially designed operator or two operators that are designed just to add the add the value 1 to a variable or subtract the value 1. So they're designed just to add 1 and subtract 1. They're called the increment and decrement operators. Now, each of the operators have two different versions you can think of. You can do a prefix version and a postfix. And basically what that means is prefix is means that the operator comes before the variable and postfix means that it comes after the variable. And they, and they do have a reason behind it. So I'll show you that now. So let's first just take a new variable, int y equals 5. So the operator to add 1 to it, yes, I can say x equals x plus 1. Yes, I can say x plus equal 1. But the third way of doing it, I can say x 
or I mean y plus plus. Plus plus simply means add one to y. That is it. If I go console dot right line and print out y, I'll add the text. The value of y is and plug in y. If I run this, you'll see that the value of y is six. So it takes whatever y is and adds one to it. That's all the operator does. It's designed just for that. But notice how I said that, that there was a postfix and a prefix. So this is the postfix, meaning the plus plus is coming after the y. If I take it and bring it before the y, that is also perfectly valid, and we'll still see the same 6 here. So you may be wondering, well, what is the difference? So the difference comes when we're dealing with this operator and assigning values to new variables. So basically, this is how we do it. Let's say we have two... Uh, three variables no nah, actually two is fine let's say we have int b equals four and int c equals b plus plus we'll start with b plus plus first so in the console i want to basically just print out both values i want to print the value of b is and the value of c is i want to plug in b and c so let's first run this and see what we get. So the values of B and C. So it says the value of B is 5 and the value of C is 4. So that may be a little confusing. This is where the plus plus in the front and the back matters. So what's happening here is in an assignment, when I, if I say int C equals B plus plus, what happens is it first says C equals B. If you read it from left to right, it says C equals B. So whatever B is at that second, it gets assigned to C. So because B is 4, right at that moment, C takes the value of uh, 4. Boom. C is set. Now it keeps on going on and saying, okay, well, there's a plus plus attached to B. The plus plus says, okay, increase B now by 1. So now B becomes 5, but C still says 4 because C was assigned that 4 before it ever saw the plus plus. So C is 4 in this case, and B goes to 5 with the plus plus. Now, if I put the plus plus in front, and this is a different story. When C starts running and saying, okay, C equals plus plus B. So what happens there is B goes up by 1 first. So now B has the value of 5 because the plus plus came first. And then it does the assignment to B after. So it says C equals B. Well, B is now 5. So now C and B will both be 5. If I run this, we'll see that it says both B and both C are 5. So that is the very small difference between plus plus in the front and back. It's called prefix and postfix. Now, the same thing applies with minus minus. I could just change this to minus minus. And it does the same exact thing. It just subtracts by 1 instead of adding by one. So that is it for this lecture. We just took a look at using the basic arithmetic operators and how we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and do things like that. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at the basics of using the bool data type a little bit more. I know we created a bool once, but then we're going to look into why bools are so necessary in programming and what we can actually do with them later on.